Welcome into this Monday edition of the Oxford Exxon Podcast. Chase Parham, Neil McCready, Clark Florida Studio. This uh, morning, look back at a big weekend for Ole Miss, knocking off LSU 31-17. to Look ahead to uh, Auburn as well as the Rebels and Tigers. We'll get together at Jordan Hare on Saturday night and uh, what's become a huge game in the, uh, the SEC West and the national landscape as well. Romero Miller will join us on today's show. He was... Uh, Excited all weekend. A lot of former players back in town. He's been one of the guys that's really pushed to have some uh, some events to to get alumni together to be able to uh, incorporate them into the program. So we'll talk to him about what that was like here in segment two of today's show. A show brought to you every single day by the Oxford Exxon Highway Six West in Oxford. Need to uh, remember to head on over there on Highway Six. Take a selfie. When you do that, you need to tag Oxford Exxon on Twitter. You need to hashtag Blue Sky Rebels. And when you do that, they will automatically enter you into a chance to win an official Ole Miss football helmet. You can also get lunch specials for five sixty nine. dollars Download the Speed Pass Plus app because you will earn points and save money there with all Blue Sky locations in Mississippi. And again, coming to you from the Clark Ford studio. We are Clark Ford's in Amory, Mississippi. 662-257-1900 is the number. Call it. Ask for Corey Clark. Tell Corey what Ford product you're looking for. He'll send you a quote within 15 minutes in business hours. Just right to the bottom line. <clears throat> no hassle, no haggle. You get your quote, the rest is up to you. You can shop it around or you can do what I've done. What I recommend that you do. And it's hop into a Clark Ford today. 662-257-1900. Guest, join us on the Rafters Music and Food Hotline. Rafters Music and Food on the Square in Oxford. Be a great place uh, this weekend if uh, you're hanging around to um, watch Ole Miss Auburn. Some of the other games, I don't even know what else is on. I've got a list here somewhere, but forgot it. Um, anyway, just hang out. Uh, World Series will be going on by then. Mm-hmm. So um, that starts on Tuesday. If you're looking for a place to hang out, grab a burger, a po' boy, great appetizers, great beer selection, full bar, the whole deal there at Rafters, music and food on the square in Oxford and also in New Albany. Yeah, you know, we watched the NLCS together on Saturday night while we were doing the, the walk-ons postgame show. And, I mean, I was obviously wanting the Braves to win. I got home and, frankly, forgot about it for about 30 minutes. And I turned it on with one out in the night. So, I guess I caught the last two outs um, of it. And I still, like, again, I mean, to you guys out there that are diehard Braves fans that are really reveling in this for the first time since 99 with them in the World Series – it's nowhere of that, but I did have a little bit of like childhood nostalgia pop up as, as it happened the other night. I, I feel like I'm excited about the World Series strictly from that standpoint of remembering how excited I was in the 90s. I mean, staying up late to watch Lonnie Smith screw up in Game 7 of the 91 World Series and then get me by the Blue Jays in 92 and you know win it finally in 95. I remember where I was when Justice hits the home run and the whole deal. So there, there, there's a little bit of that where I'm almost playing my childhood back in my head versus – who was 99 against the Yankees? 99 was the Yankees, yeah, because 96 was the one that actually hurt the most because that's when they went up 2-0 in New York and then lost four straight. So we're trying to go back-to-back. They, 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 yeah, they won that the first Jim, two. That was Yankees Jim Lairitz. That was the Jim Lairitz home run, yeah. That is that is correct in, in 96. Yeah, I was I – was, I want to say I was bartending. Because 97 was Indians-Marlins, 99 was uh, – 98 was Padres-Yankees. No, 99 Braves Yankees 2000 Subway Series. Gotcha. I believe that that's the, the 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 late 90s order. But anyway, it's just kind of fun from that standpoint. Uh ratings will be good. It's two entertaining teams. Um Braves an interesting story since they were very mediocre for the majority of the season. Nationally more people for Atlanta still because of Houston's history here recently, you would assume. The the, the sidewalk baseball fan. Yeah, I would think so. I would think that they're Sidewalk baseball fan has some Astros fatigue and still views the Astros as this um, evil, cheating empire. And then there's also going to be a lot of people who revel in the fact that Major League Baseball made a complete ass of itself before the season by moving the All-Star game out of Atlanta, where it was supposed to be, because of the voting rights bullshit stuff. Yeah. And, um, And probably enjoy Rob Manfred having to Spend his weekend in Atlanta. Truth there. Yep. I mean, there were a lot of people, self included, who sort of trolled Major League Baseball over the weekend. Like, yeah. hey, you going to move the World Series games to Denver? Friday, Saturday, Sunday in Atlanta, right? So, Game Five on Halloween yeah. night. Yeah. Um, That's they correct. open Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday in Houston to kick it off. Um, yeah, I don't necessarily. Oh, the screen is better. That's right. 
I cleaned uh, it. Okay. It's, it worked. It's even better than it was before I thought we had a problem. So it was, What I did, um, shockingly, was I did not use my thumb. You did not? You I didn't did think not. that was a problem? I got a clean cloth uh-huh. and uh, a little bit of Windex. Okay. I know I'm surprised that. Yeah, would I mean, work. fingerprints and in, in oil, um, not not the thing to clean the screen. Apparently, so, shockingly, that my method worked better. It's but yeah. it, it's 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 not uncommon to notice now that I do not wear glasses. I have no idea what I'm doing with anything. So, um, if if Houston wins, because I find him so quirky and entertaining, I would kind of like to see Grinky get a ring. I think he's the one guy in Houston where I go, yeah, he probably deserves a ring. Yeah, you're not a guy, you're not a Grinky guy. I'm fine with him. Okay. I think some of it is uh, some of it is difficult for me to believe that it's completely organic, natural. That oh, he's well, that okay. that he's that weird. Well, that's probably true. That's probably very very. Some very of it true. feels like an act. Yeah, I'm for the Braves. I think the Astros, unfortunately, are likely a better team. But I'm well, they are a better team. But I'm I'm for the Braves. I mean, we, we've said this throughout the entire time. Just get in the tournament and figure it out. Oh, sure. Now, now it's need, four out of seven for a ring at this point. You just so. need to win four games. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, you mentioned it, uh, games this week, we'll get into lines, uh, if we need to today, we can always do it tomorrow, if we, whatever, but, um, in the SEC, Missouri, Vanderbilt, uh, that'll, I mean, that's going to get the asses in the seats, Georgia and Florida, uh, Kentucky, Mississippi State with an interesting line there, although it's moved a little bit now, uh, Ole Miss and Auburn, and, oh, that's it, so light, light week in the SEC this week. Oh, I think it's a big, I think the game at, in Starville's a in, really interesting game. Yeah. State can beat Kentucky. I was just surprised State opened as a favorite, I guess. It was like one point? It was two. What's it moved to? Uh, well, you've got it at State minus – I mean, Kentucky minus one. So, I guess it's okay. moved three points from whatever okay. point that was to whatever. Yeah. I would have made it basically a pick if you'd asked me. So, we'll uh, we'll get into those a little bit. We've got some other uh, games around the country there in, uh, in Neil's picks. Ole Miss uh, moves up to number nine in the coaches poll, number ten in the uh, in the AP poll this week. So let me get ahead of this. Yep. We've always used the AP poll. We've just consistency. <clears throat> so when we refer to them as number ten this week, we're not sliding anyone. It's just we're just being consistent. This is more of a baseball problem than a football problem, typically. But yes, yes. that is that is correct because. In baseball, the official site drives me insane when they take the best poll for all teams. So you'll have those days where it's number six Ole Miss versus number six Kentucky. Yeah. And it, it grates on my nerves almost as badly as the stupid intentional grounding rule. Like, it just I, – I can't get over it. So we use the AP poll in football, we use the AP poll in basketball, and we use D1 baseball in baseball. That is that is the, the standard operating procedure with what we'll do there. So – Ole Miss at number ten, and they just missed number nine in the in the AP poll by one point. Um, Iowa has ten thirty five. Ole Miss has ten thirty four for uh, for that one. It's Georgia, Cincinnati, Alabama, Oklahoma, Ohio State, Michigan, Oregon, Michigan State, Iowa, Ole Miss. Uh, Michigan State plays Michigan this week, by the way. That's correct. Um, for Ole Miss, they are ranked as highly as number six. That is Nate Meek, who works for a paper in Syracuse. He's had the Rebels very high all season. It's been pretty pretty uh, on that. Uh, five different people have Ole Miss at seven, and then like seven or eight have them at eight, including Robbie Falk, the Mississippi person. I would I had um, them at eight in my poll that doesn't count. Yes, but I actually spent some actual time on it uh-huh. yesterday trying to make sure that I, would, I did it like I would actually do it. Uh huh. And I I would have had Ole Miss at seven or eight. I put them at eight. And then uh, on the bottom end, uh, three people have Ole Miss at twelve, including Brett McMurphy. Kirk Bowles has them at thirteen. He covers Texas. And then John Wilner is the uh, guy at the end. He has him at fourteen. He works for the San Jose newspaper. I don't know how you get him there. I can so I can I can anything over seven, and I think you're you're you're, you're showing high. favoritism. Anything below ten, and I think you're punishing them. They're six and one, and their one loss is to the second best team in the country on the road. Well, John Wilner, I pulled up his his thing because I was just curious. <laughs> He still has he has Penn State still at twelve. They lost to Illinois. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I, I he don't. has Penn State at twelve. He has Oklahoma State at ten. <clears throat> Illinois is a, a three and five team. Yes. Now Brett's done a decent job there. They're more competitive this year than they've been in past, but they're still a three and five team. And they went. You you lost to them at home. It wasn't in Champaign. Mm-hmm. You lost to them at home. And I, I know it was nine overtimes, but you lost to them at home. 
I know the answer is no, but if there is a candidacy, does that hurt James Franklin at all in the Baton Rouge deal? Probably not. Did he need to have a certain that, type of season? That deal's about to get super weird. That deal's got train wreck. Well, there's always a fight on any it. coaching search in Baton Rouge. There's always a fight. You've got 10 different people but with power got, and sticks. Now you've got stuff. some different elements on this fight. You've got you've got a president who's really going in hard on this. Like, I mean, it's it's a president who's flexing his muscles yeah. versus an AD who basically was like, "I was hired for this hire." Yeah, they brought me here knowing this train. No would- human being on earth has more confidence in a coaching search than Scott Woodward. But let's let's talk about this from Scott Woodward's standpoint. He didn't hire Ed Orgeron. And I'm sure he would say in a, in a room that he would never have hired Ed Orgeron. People say, why does that matter? Well, it matters because Scott Woodward was brought there in his eyes, and I think in many ways this is true, to be the one who makes this hire. To be the one who... F- <clears throat> to be the one who, um, who fires Ed Orgeron, mm-hmm. handles his exit, knowing it could be ugly, and then hire his replacement. And in his eyes, you have this brand new chancellor, president, whatever he's called, who's brought in, who has no freaking idea what he's doing. This is his eye, his his perception. Right. And he's kind of like, no, hold up a minute. You're going to give me a list? I, this is what I do. And the president's like, yeah, I'm giving you a damn list. And this is going to be, and what we have ourselves is, you know, that, that, that GIF that people use or GIF or whatever, we've got ourselves a showdown <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and a month. Yeah. So when you have a showdown, that's just two or three days. It's one thing when you've got a showdown that goes a month, it's another my favorite part of this is that we're talking about a showdown and we're not even going into the booster activity yet. We're just talking about like the normal stuff, the president and the AD and the people actually hired and getting paychecks from the university. I mean, because all of them are going to have their little factions and their subsects yeah. and all this stuff here. You've got the Burtman guys or the old guys and you got the other guys who actually won the baseball search with the new money. And I mean, it's 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 a book, man. Like this next month is so chaotic and I'm so excited about it from that standpoint of just boom. Yeah. I mean, it's a powder keg. No, it's a, it's an absolute powder keg. Cause there are some words that could get dropped in the next month that bring it even more attention. There are elements to it that make it explosive. Throw in all the title nine stuff that still hangs. The NCAA stuff that, Hangs, and I know what people say. And Andy Staples wrote it. And listen, I'm I'm a massive Andy Staples fan. Sure, but the NCAA has no teeth. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. He's probably right. But you've got a league office. You've got a league office that that likes to flex its muscles. You've got a lot here, and at the end of the day. You've got a massive stadium that you want to fill. You've got massive donate donors that you want to keep donating. There's a lot here. Mm-hmm. And so this showdown, and right now I'm sure it's very congenial. Sure. It's October. But you can feel all the way from here just talking to people. You can feel the beginnings of some tension there. We got a month. We got a month of this. I mean, they still have they have an open date. Then they go to Alabama. Alabama will smoke them. The line on that game probably is what twenty five and a half somewhere in there. Sure. Then they get Arkansas at home. Um, depending on what Arkansas does against Mississippi State in two weeks, Arkansas might take fifteen thousand people down there. Mm-hmm. Then you've got ULM, which quite frankly is the recipe for total embarrassment because sure. they're playing okay. I mean, they are. They just beat Liberty and South Alabama. Yeah, okay. If you don't try, they'll be in the game Yeah, because they'll try. And it's not that you – it's not even they're going to win. You don't need them in the game. 
late third quarter and it's 17-14, you're going, oh, my God. Well, at that point, they could win. Yeah. And then they're going to get smoked in all likelihood by Texas A&M. Yeah. And so at the end of all that, that's a, that's a lot of acrimony yeah. on its way. And at the end of all that, you've got to make a hire. And now you've got the transfer portal kicks in. You've got a whole bunch. There's all sorts of rumors about LSU players. Yeah. So I don't know. It's, it's fascinating times. That's one of the things we don't see because we're doing the show and whatnot. I did not realize that Ole Miss showed Pitt beating Clemson on the Jumbotron. That's kind of funny, actually. That was clever. Um, <clears throat> we'll go to Romero in a minute. We'll talk to him about Ole Miss it. showed what, – what am I missing? Well, Arch was in town. They showed Pitt beating up Clemson oh, on the jumbo train gotcha. during the uh, during the game. Gotcha. Uh, He's not going to Clemson. Clemson, one of the only two teams in the country um, who has not scored at least twenty points in a game against FBS competition. There for a stat for twenty twenty one. We'll go to Romero in a second. First, talk about Community Mortgage, Oxford, Memphis, Soto County, and Chattanooga. All underwriting and processing is done in Memphis. So you're going to look at underwriting and understand your market. A leader in condo financing, the float down option, and more. You can find Jason at 662-234-2704 or J-L-O-W-E at communitymtg.com. We're also brought to you by Grenada Nissan. If you're in the market for a Nissan vehicle, Grenada Nissan's the place to go. They've got a complete selection of new and previously owned Nissan vehicles. Great lease deals as well. It's Grenada, NissanUSA.com. Brought to you by Walk-On's Sports Bistro. They put everything they've got into bringing you game day with a taste of Louisiana. Dig into their mouth-watering Louisiana cuisine like po' boys, gumbo, voodoo shrimp, plus fan favorites like juicy burgers, fresh salads, quality fresh ingredients you can't help but crave. Looking for a place to watch Monday Night Football tonight? Enjoy a great meal, great atmosphere? Go to 720 Highland Colony Parkway in Ridgeland to join their team today. Walk-On's Sports Bistro, more than a restaurant. We are also brought to you by uh, Brothrow. If you're uh, looking for a cool new way to bet, go to Brothrow. It's a social sports betting network. It's free to use. It's no third party, so there's no juice. Over time, that saves you money. You can start your own group, make friends, and invite your friends. Payment happens within 24 hours of the conclusion of your bet. You can take the other side of an existing bet, start a new bet, and more. It's bet.brothrow.com backslash mpw we're also brought to you by muddy water camo uh, go to muddywateroutdoors.com enter the promo code rebel grove and get a 35 percent discount on any products from the site free shipping on 100 dollars or more as well they've got uh, lots of new products on the site they've got their brand new muddy water lady camo apparel they've got the tri-zone heated vest and jackets so, again, go to Muddy Water Outdoors, promo code Rebel Grove for 35% off. Same promo code at Dead Soxy, deadsoxy.com. Uh, 25% off your entire order at Dead Soxy, the best socks you'll ever put on your feet. Um, you got three home games left in uh, November, so still have time to enjoy the Grove and uh, get in touch with the people at 7 South Tailgating. They provide the equipment, secure the spot, set everything up for you. Unloading assistance, food, beverage delivery on game day as well. It's um, 7SouthTailgating.com, 662-321-1682. And you want to be prepared when you're in the Grove. You want to be prepared for Halloween. That's coming up as well. Get uh, in touch with the people at Game Changer Patch Company. They want to help you prepare. They're the only two-patch system available in the market today. Uh, they have um, the ability to stop hangovers before they start. What they do is they have the warm-up patch, which is used before or while you drink. The overtime patch is used after you've been drinking to recover while you sleep. The all-natural ingredients will keep you in the game and ready for your next play. It's GameChangerPatch.com. Promo code REBELGROVE20 at checkout for 25% off your purchase. Like I said, it's brought to you by Visit Oxford. Visit OxfordMS.com. You can uh, head there, see all the events going on this week and every week. Ole Miss back at home before you know it. And on those Fridays... You get tunes around town. That's from five to seven, multiple spots around the downtown area, including the square, to get some dessert, get some takeout, and enjoy local artists. Also, double decker bus tours, three and four o'clock there on those Friday afternoons. And remember, an adult ticket gets you $100 off a pair of Blue Delta jeans. So experience Oxford like you haven't before. Again, that's visit oxfordms.com slash events. Now we'll go to Romero Miller. Let Neil get that uh, get queued up here in a second. And we'll talk to him about the weekend. He knows it's FaceTime. Uh, I assume. I but okay it's all, it's all make good. sure he knows that he's live when he answers
It's always a good pro tip, isn't it? It is. Just, just in a, case. I mean, just a nice thing to tell a friend. Hello? Hello? Ro, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. How about y'all? Oh, we're lovely. Looks like, uh, we'll jump right into it. Looks like you had a big time this weekend. Yeah, man, it was it was a good weekend in Oxford, man. One of the one of the better weekends that I've had in a, in a while. Um, was able to uh, see old friends, uh, celebrate Eli, and um, get a get a W. So all in all, it was a great weekend. I checked out your social media. You were talking about you met Patrick Willis for the first time. Saw a lot of former yeah. players, teammates, that kind of thing. Um, I, I know that. I mean, I want to focus on the good. I want to focus on the weekend. But it's been a frustration for a lot of former players for a long time. There weren't more events, more chances to get guys involved, get them together. What has that push kind of been like? And then, you know, when it finally pays off, is it kind of cool just to finally get something like that accomplished? Yeah, man, it is. And um, just like you said, I mean, well, this ain't something that uh, been talked. We've talked about this uh, kind of behind the scenes amongst each other. Um, that you know, just a lack of involvement. And um, this time right here, for the first time that I can remember, um, they sent out a invitation and they rented out a um, they rented out a restaurant. So we had like a little meet and greet social type of deal. And I think what happened was they sent out emails and um, everybody didn't get it, um, which is um, they don't have they don't have email addresses on everybody. I actually were talking to some players on Saturday and they were like, "Man, I didn't even know about it." Um, but like I said, it's a start. Um, it's a start, like I said, just uh, one of them deals that we have to do um, because uh, we, we just don't get it together often. And um, those, are, like I said, like for myself, I've never met Patrick Willis, <laughs> you know, and uh, everybody like, man, how in the world did you not meet, meet Patrick Willis? I'm like, man, we just we don't get together. <laughs> and this was an opportunity for us to get together and just meet and greet each other. Yeah. What was Friday night like? You had you guys had a couple hours there. I think it was a Tallahassee Gourmet. What was how, how would you sort of describe it? Man, it was just uh, just reminiscing. Um, I, I, t- I make jokes. I say, as we get older, everybody's an all-American, <laughs> you know. But but it was just fun just to sit back and uh, just just ent- enjoy memories of uh, some of the past plays and some of the past games, and you know, just to check in on guys and see what they're doing now. Um, hopefully, this right here will be the start, and uh, we can make it bigger and bigger and bigger and better. Um, I think the fans, they kind of enjoy seeing all the guys on a jumbotron and trying to pump up the crowd and stuff like that, which I was excited about that. You know, I did the Lock the Vault. Uh, I did the Lock the Vault, the Arkansas game. Right. And I told Patrick Willis on Friday night, like, man, you better bring that heat. You can't, you can't let me down on that one. So he, uh, it was just fun just to see him do it and just see all the other guys up there also. You know, what can they kind of do? Or I guess start here, was, is this kind of key? I mean, where do you sort of put the credit? Like, what, 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 got, what made this happen? Well, I have been talking to Denson Hollins um, the last, uh, I guess, about the last three weeks. Um, and him and I and Todd, we had group text messages and stuff like that. And, you know, he was always asking me, um, you know, what what should we do type of deal, you know, as far as getting this deal together. So um, I put uh, a lot of it on Denson quite naturally. And Keith came through at the end. Um, a lot of guys that hadn't been back for a while, I mean, they don't even know who to call for the small things anymore. <laughs> Uh, you know, I had about five players last week to call me asking me for different people on campus number just because they just don't know who to know, don't know who to reach out to anymore. It's kind of funny because, you know, a lot of the guys that we came through with, like your Jay Stearns and your Possum and all those guys, now they're gone. <laughs> you know, so really the only people on campus that a lot of the guys they know is still Ken Crane which I'm quite sure everybody hit it, tried to call him this week to try to get some gear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then um, probably JT over the ticket office. So I know I had a lot of calls looking for those guys' numbers. So I know when the guys came in town, they was asking for all kind of gear and T-shirts and stuff like that. But now it was, like I said, like, no, so like I said, Chase, it was a good deal, man. It was a good event. And uh, like I said, it, just, uh, it was just a great weekend. And we um, got back together and we celebrated um, Eli career. Obviously, they were busy, but how much interaction did you guys have with like Kiffin and the current staff? Um, n- yeah, they was busy. We didn't have any um, any interaction with that staff. Um, like I said, everything 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 to me is based around uh, Denson and Keith. I think with Kiffin and his staff deal, their biggest focus is always going to be football. And I tell sure. people all the time, you know, I'm not the, I'm not the type of person that care to meet coaches or anything like that because. I don't want to be friend coaches because if they start losing some games, I'm going to be the first one to uh, say they need to be fired. And I don't, and I don't want them calling me. Hey, bro, why are you talking about me? I thought we were boys. Nope. We ain't boys. Romero want to get to, uh, I, want to get, I want to get to Atlanta. So I take, I take, uh, take friendships out. I just want to win ball games, baby. 
I know the ankle was a little stiff. What was the challenge for Corral just throwing and stuff? I mean, when, it, when it's your ankle, what are, what are the big things he did have to kind of overcome on Saturday? Man, I tell you, uh, I don't know. I don't know the extent of the injury. I remember when I played. Uh, I think that was ninety nine. I played in the um, the Egg Bowl, and I remember I got my ankle shot up before in the game. And um, for me, that game it was it was perfect um, the first half. But then when you get into halftime, you start sitting down and stuff like that. It kind of got stiff up on me. Um, so I don't know if he. Uh, had to take a shot. I, I just don't know because, you know, with this staff, I mean, injury reports, I mean, you can't get any kind of injury report out of these guys. So, he got it. He got it know, shot I, up. I just before don't know. The, he got it shot up before the game. And he, he right. said that it wore off second, second, quarter. second quarter. Yep. That's, that's how, that's how it happened to me. Like I said, when I did, when I, when I got it, man, the first, the first half, I was fine. But then when you go in at halftime and you sitting down and you got that little 20 minute break or whatever that break may be, man, that sucker get tight. So um, it was just glad that we was able to run the ball. And um, like I said, he can just go out and just manage the game and, you know, just survive. Survive this game. Then he'll get a couple of days to try to let it heal a little bit more. Um, and hopefully hopefully it'll, it'll heal a little bit more because we're going to need him uh, close to 100% as we can going out of Auburn. What's kind of your take on the game overall? I mean, Ole Miss pretty much dominated, but what did you, what, you sort of see from your vantage point? Man, it's kind of crazy. I was, I was telling my group Texas, um, I said, man, we took Battles, who I swear was playing cornerback like two weeks ago, and we put him over at wide receiver, and he's out there catching the balls. But that just goes to show, man, I was just thinking, man, whenever we get a full roster with this staff, I mean, just think of what we're going to be able to do. They're just, they're just plugging guys in and just finding ways to play. You know, you uh, you move around, uh, have, have some guys on the offensive line to move around, I think, uh, early in the game. And uh, man, we di- we didn't miss we didn't miss a beat. Uh, we just just to go in and and dominate LSU the way we did. Man, it's been a long time, but I tell you, it, it felt good to go to a game where we didn't have to sweat it out at the end. You were a part of the first ever actually Ole Miss win at Auburn in '99. What uh, what do you kind of remember from that day? I mean, the obvious, um, I assume. Man, that, that that game was big that day because it was the first game that we played against Tuberville. and uh, quite naturally, both uh, both teams were fired up. Quite naturally. Uh, we wanted to win that game just because of the way he had left us. And uh, quite naturally, it was an SEC game for them, and they wanted to win. But we just, uh, like I said, it just, it's going to be a loud environment, especially um, in, the, in the PM. I wish that game would have been the 11 o'clock game just so it won't give um, their fans a chance to get liquored up. <laughs> but uh, we've been to a hostile environment before, you know, up in, up at Tennessee. And um, just hopefully the guys, they've learned from that and will, will go out and just do their job and get this win because this right here is the, the biggest game of the year. It's kind of crazy. The LSU game was the biggest game of the year, and now this is the biggest game of the year. And if we win this one, the next game will be the biggest game of the year. So I kind of I kind of like, I kind of like you know, going to every game saying it's the biggest game of the year. That means that we're winning and we're taking care of business. So hopefully we take care of business and make the next game the biggest game of the year. Jordan here gets loud. How much, having already played in Tuscaloosa, having already played in Knoxville, does that sort of help them knowing that they're going to have to deal with that on Saturday? Man, it's going it's going to help them out tremendously. I don't think there's, um, I mean, it, it gets to a point where it just can't get any louder anymore. I don't, I mean, any louder. I don't think, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, from talking to everybody that went up to Knoxville, they said that that stadium was crazy. And um, hopefully, like I said, the guys, they, they should be ready for it. I mean, we didn't, went, we didn't been in these environments before. You know, Neil, and once you start to win and you start to get ranked, man, those crowds are going to start getting louder and louder because now we're turning into the guys that uh, other teams are starting to hunt. And um, we're going to have to bring our A game every time. So hopefully this weekend it'll be the same thing, bring your A game and let's get a W and let's get out of there. I, rem- I was on the field. I was covering Auburn in 99. I was on the field when that game ended. I actually helped you. I don't, you probably don't remember this. I actually helped you find Noel Mazzoni because he was looking for you uh, right. after the game. So I know he yeah. talked to you. Did Tommy Tuberville ever talk to you after either the 99 or the 2000 game? Yeah, I don't think I've talked to Tommy, Coach Tuberville um, since he left. Really? Um, I don't think I've t- I don't think I've talked to him since I since I uh, since he left. The only guys, uh, quite naturally, I was close, cl- very close to uh, Noel Mazzoni, as you, you know, as you talked about, and um, some of the other guys on the staff. But once he left, I mean, we pretty much just we ended we ended all communication. Pretty much, I was gonna say with pretty much everybody on the team. I'm quite sure he somebody didn't talk to him, but it it wouldn't be like you would think. 
How did y'all, I mean, was there any conversation about him leaving when he did it? I mean, what was he, how'd you find out? What was that last day or two like? Well, you know, um, there was always rumors out there. And, yeah. Um, the quite Birmingham Post Herald told everybody, him. Yeah, everybody <laughs> talk about um, him the night before the game saying yeah. that, hey, I'm not going and all that type of stuff. And, um, you know, the next day we look up and um, it's on TV. He's taking tours of the campus down there and stuff like that. So, uh, <laughs> it, I mean, like I said, it was, a, it was a crazy time. But, you know, um, like I said, it, I guess it worked out for him. Um, and, you know, it worked out for him. So, I mean, that's all I got to say about that. One. I don't even know what to say about that. You know? So he, I mean, so the last time you talked to him, then was him just speaking to the team after the game. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yep. Yep. It was basically saying, "Hey, I'm not going. Don't don't believe the rumors." And then next, <laughs> it's and then next day, I know, boom, the rumors were true. It's under that game was on Thanksgiving, and uh, yep. and and I I was there. Mm -hmm. And all the Ole Miss people are like, why are you here? I'm like, are you serious? Why do you think I'm here? I mean, yep. it, it yep. was one of the most – that was a bizarre week. And I've, I mean, I've had a lot of bizarre weeks in my career, but that was that was up there. It was nuts. Yeah. And, you know, man, I don't even know. If you're in that situation, I don't even know as a coach, what do you do? <laughs> you know, you can't come out and say, hey, I'm going. Then you come out and say, I'm not. So, you know, just looking back at it, you know, 20 years later, I just – as I've grown and I've matured a lot more, I just I don't know what's the right way to handle it. But you got to handle it some kind of way. I just I just don't know what's the right way. Yeah, because if he just tells you guys, "Hey, I'm leaving," and then something happens the next morning, now you now you're jobless. Yep. Uh -huh. It was it was, yeah. but it was over. He he had taken. Well, then he left Cincinnati at dinner, right? He, he was left, literally with recruits. He left Texas Tech at oh, Texas dinner Tech. to That's go right. to Sorry. Cincinnati. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, the Texas Tech deal, I think he did that worse than Ole Miss. I mean, shoot. Yeah. He, was having, he was having dinner with a recruiter left and didn't even come back. I mean, that's cold-blooded right <laughs> didn't there. Didn't come back to the table. <laughs> didn't, even, didn't even pick up the check. Yeah. Cold-blooded. <laughs> who, uh, who out of all you, the former players you saw over the weekend, who could still strap it up and play? P. Willie? Man, you yeah, you, quite naturally. You know P. Willie, man. Uh, it was a good to see guys like Corn there. Patrick Trahan, which yeah. I still didn't even get to meet Patrick Trahan. I've never met Patrick Trahan. I saw him on the sideline. Um, he's a guy. Uh, he didn't. He didn't make the event the other night. But um, she run him McLean. It looked like he was feeling in pretty good shape. Uh, Goldie, yeah, yeah, what they yeah. used to call him. Now, now he's grown. He was like, man, don't call me Goldie now. I'm, my name is Ronald. Yeah, so yeah. that was the, that was the joke that we had um, the other day. But man, some of those guys, man, they look they look good. Like they still can play. Look a lot better than than what I do. But you know, like I said, like I said, man, it was one of the, one of those nights that man, you will you will remember. Um, me and David Morris, and Eli took a picture um, back back in the day, and mm -hmm. my wife was trying to get us to uh, put our hand on our knees like we did twenty <laughs> years ago. But I'm like, nah, we can't. We ain't gonna be doing stuff like that. But man, it was good, man. Like I said, man, one thing, good thing about it, man, just seeing Eli. It was the first time I've actually uh, just been able to hang out with him in a while. You know, he's busy, but um, I told somebody, man, he's the same person, same person uh, now that he was twenty years ago, and you just you can't beat it. Everybody was just happy for him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've seen, you saw the growth of that firsthand. I mean, his first couple of years there in the program and during recruiting and all, you're still hearing his name and stuff. What was it kind of like yeah. just watching the number be retired and kind of watching that ceremony? I mean, I talked to a lot of guys around you and my age who mm -hmm. got pretty emotional during all that on Saturday. Man, it make it make you feel good. It kind of make you feel like we all had a little a little piece of that, you know. Um, I mean, quite naturally, he had he he got to go out there and make the plays. But you know, I feel like man, I told him something in the, in our quarterback meeting room, and I'm quite sure the offensive line were like, you know what? I gave him a l little exit, a little extra time on that post route. So, I mean, I just think it was just one of those deals where yeah, yeah, his number was retired, but I think everybody who played with him kind of feel like we had a little piece of that also. You still doing CrossFit? You're still ready to go, right? Well, man, I, look, I go hard for about two months, and then I stop for two months. All right. And uh, right now, I'm, I'm I'm started back again. So let's keep it on going, and let's see how that gonna go. All right, appreciate it, Ro. As always, have a good day, bud. All right, man, y'all have a good one. That was Romero Miller. Always uh, appreciate his time here on the podcast. It's a podcast that is also brought to you by ACS. Automation and Control Systems, LLC. They're owned by Clay McNutt, Baldwin, Mississippi, a complete electrical control system solution provider and a Rockwell Automation Recognized System Integrator. ACS has a full-time, dedicated emergency service and troubleshooting staff and a UL508A panel shop. Uh, they can service and install Rockwell Automation, Allen Bradley, Siemens, ABB, Square D, and many other manufacturers. Go to acsllcms.com or call 662 601 4381. 
Pinpoint Commercial Real Estate is based out of Jackson. They service the entire state and all commercial asset classes such as retail, office, industrial, and land. Sam Cox, B.B. Mitchell, or Ole Miss grads, they utilize their unique skill sets to execute on assignments and increase value for their clients. Uh, this week's property spotlights on the Village at Madison. The Village at Madison will feature roughly 60,000 square feet of restaurant, retail, medical, and professional office space, along with 75 zero lot line residences, with Pinpoint handling the leasing for the commercial portion of the development. If you'd like to learn more about this great opportunity, give BB and Sam a call at 601 586 3220. Blue Delta Jeans is happy to announce the inaugural Coastal Cup Waterfowl Tournament. Hosted January 19th through the 21st at the Bay Flats Lodge on the San Antonio Bay of Texas. This competitive team duck hunting event will include two days of Texas coastal waterfowl hunting, meals, drinks, and lodging, and two pairs of custom jeans for every participant. Special guests of the event will include Josh Raggio of Raggio Custom Calls and Barton Ramsey of Southern Oak Kennels. You've heard us talk for years about Blue Delta's annual golf tournament. Now it's the time for the duck hunters to show their skills. For information on the event or to register your team, contact Blake Kokenauer at blake at bluedeltagenes.com. Support for the Oxford Exxon broadcast is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code MPW. At manscaped.com. Imagine shaving with a sleek, well designed, and optimized trimmer that makes shaving time your favorite time in the bathroom. One of the first people to try the new 4.0 and blown away by the performance, the craftsmanship, and details are next level. The upgraded trimmer includes a multi function on off switch that can engage a travel lock, gives you the ability to turn the 4000K LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. The lawnmower 4.0 even allows you to customize your trim through additional guard links with sizes 1 through 4. Did I mention wireless charging? The new wireless charging system uses electromagnetic induction, which can help battery length last longer. It's time to get your own ball hair and body trimmer with Manscaped to make me time the best time and enhance your confidence with some nice, nice smooth boys. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code MPW at Manscaped.com. The 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code MPW. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. The podcast also brought to you by NE Spark. They are uh, nespark.com, 662-238-3159. Two internet packages, the 100 Mbps, or the Blaze, the one gig that powers the Clark Ford Studio, your hometown team bringing you world-class broadband. That's nespark.com. Phone service, parental controls, network security, a wireless mesh extender, and much more. So call the office for details and find out the best internet for you. That's 662-238-3159. Uh, let's get into picks a little bit, I guess. We'll uh, we'll do that. Uh, lines, you mean? Oh, yeah, lines, whatever, picks. We can go and do picks if you want. You, you, you ready to go? I mean, we can't do any worse than doing it now than waiting. I mean, really, what's the... Jeffrey's starting to run away. Is he running away? A little bit. I mean, I'm I'm not overly shocked. I mean, I... I, I I know you're a two time defending champion, but at the end of the day, I'm not I'm not I'm in, surprised I'm in second. by this. I'm in second. You're in third. Everybody's above five hundred except Zach. Okay. And he's had two good weeks in a row. He's closing in on five hundred. Okay. But we need to keep him around if he's under five hundred. We need to He's need, our he's our Vanderbilt. Yeah, we, we, we look, we gotta have somebody down there, okay? So I mean it it, it is what it is with uh with this thing. So just uh just 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 saying. Uh let's see. <laughs> oh, sorry, he's making me laugh. Um, all right, let's see. Looking at uh looking for lines a little bit, going to uh the odd shark for this. Liberty will miss his next opponent. They are thirty five and a half point favorites this week, McGrady. They are thirty five and a half point favorites. Who are they playing? Well, there's only a couple teams they could be playing to be thirty five and a half point favorites. They were playing Massachusetts this weekend. Oh. It was gonna be UConn or UMass, one of the uh one of the other there. Um, let's see. This is on our list. Texas and Baylor this week. Texas at Baylor playing in Waco. Baylor is a two and a half point favorite. It opened at three. So now it's two and a half in uh in that one. Cincinnati is in New Orleans this week playing Tulane. They're twenty four and a half point favorites over the uh over the wave. Did you see the story about Liberty, by the way? I did see the story about Liberty. It's always a story about Liberty. Every month there's a story about Liberty. I mean, and I don't know the answer to this. I mean, I'm not in education. I'm not pretending to know how this works. 
do you run? I mean, I, I, does, does this even matter? Does it could it happen? Do you run into chances of potentially losing your accreditation over this? Like, is there some actual university? You should something. Well, sure. I mean, you should. I mean, I just don't know how it works. A young woman goes and files a complaint alleging that she was raped, and you punish her without even looking into the allegation. And further, you take her phone, her phone, and delete evidence from her phone? Hey, come on. Yeah, I mean... I mean, you got to be a special kind of evil to do that. Saw the guy from AL.com talking about teams should stop playing them in football and just giving them free checks because of how despicable their university has That's become. more than fair. Now, you couldn't break the contract right now. But. No, but I mean, look, if you're going to pay – if I hate the pay games, but if you're going to play them, do what Arkansas did last weekend. Keep it in the state. Give it to one of the smaller schools. Like Ole Miss could play Alcorn. Or Mississippi Valley. Or, well, I've always felt that's the case. I mean, keep it in state. and Have Jackson State come up. Give the money to them. Giving the money to Liberty? Forget Freeze. It's not Freeze's fault. I mean, I've got issues with Freeze, but I, don't, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, yeah, I'm not blaming the football coach. Over but there. I am blaming Falwell. Well, you got to blame Falwell. I mean, he's got enough totally. of his own problems. Yeah, it's him. Yes, and his family, and God only knows what policies are in place that, at that place. God only knows the level of corruption done in God's name, frankly, uh, there. I don't know. I, I wouldn't want to schedule them. I would, if, I were, if I were a, a university president right now and my AD came to me with liberty on the future schedule, I'd say, no, go, go find someone else. Much rather give that money to Alcorn. Let them come up. Be a cool experience for their kids. Jackson State, bring Dion in the band. Yeah. Let's have a big time. You're going to win the game. Give them whatever the money is. I mean, whatever Arkansas gave Arkansas Pine Bluff, I sure you would go a lot further in Pine Bluff than it's going to go at Liberty. Mm-hmm. In the middle of a disastrous season, Tom Allen in Indiana, two and a half point underdogs to Maryland this weekend. Um, there in uh, in College Park, Michigan, Michigan State, huge game. Michigan at the uh, the Spartans. And Mel Tucker and his Spartans hit the over under on their Vegas season three weeks ago, something like that. I think whenever they went to six and zero, because they were at five and a half on the year for their over under. Uh, Michigan State is at home getting three and a half from the Wolverines in this one. As much as I don't like Michigan. I got to hand it to Jim Harbaugh. His team's really good. Getting a lot of uh, getting a lot of production out of new players and that kind of thing. This is an interesting game. A lot of eyes on Mel Tucker at that LSU deal. Be a real opportunity for him to raise his stock for that gig in the event that he wants it. What's interesting is there are people who say Mel Tucker might not want it. Might prefer to stay at Michigan State. Well, look. Make a lot of money, coach. Sure, it's fine. I've never been to East Lansing, but I'm sure it's fine. I mean, yeah, never there is there. a draw to that. Sure. I mean, now most coaches aren't wired that way. Sure. Up, 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 title, 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 up, up, up. But the coaches that go, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I completely get that. 100%. Uh, let's see. Where are we uh, where are we at? Iowa is at Wisconsin this week. Pretty big game, actually. Wisconsin trying to win a division in the Big Ten. What's that line? Wisconsin is a three point favorite at home yeah, over the uh, right. over the Hawkeyes at the moment. <clears throat> uh, Iowa State on the road in Morgantown. West Virginia plays pretty well at home. They're getting seven um, at home against the Cyclones this weekend. First SEC game. This is at three o'clock or two. What is it? Three o'clock? I guess it's three o'clock. Why don't I have Central Time Zones on Odd Shark anyway? Three o'clock, Missouri and Vanderbilt back in Nashville. Did you see the crowd Saturday in Nashville? 
Uh, I mean, we knew it was going to be bad, but it looked like an 11 a.m. 1A high school game in a sparsely attended state. I mean, is it is the game's in Nashville this week too, right? Yeah, right. Missouri coming. Yeah, yeah. I mean, state took, I don't know, five thousand people, and that was about it. I mean, it was nothing. Well, Missouri won't take five thousand. No, you'll get some people that will go just for the. Nashville experience, mm-hmm. but some of those people end up not going to the game. Yeah, they're just go hang out and watch it in a bar on West End somewhere. Um, I think. Listen, I, I, I've said this. I mean, the league gets involved in stuff. I think the league has a Vanderbilt problem. It just doesn't want to acknowledge that it has a Vanderbilt problem. Because I mean, it goes beyond. Oh, you just need a bad team. They don't try. Yeah. I mean, we talked. I was on Chris Lee's podcast. Why do you need a bad ago. team, by the way? Well, you don't need everybody to be superpowers. No, I kind of like everyone trying to be a superpower. You. Kind of makes it fun. I don't think it's the worst thing for the league to have an academic team that's not very good. Okay. But make it Duke. They try. Here lately, Vanderbilt's not good at anything. No, just baseball. That's it. And baseball doesn't register on the national map. And if anything becomes probably it annoys the league a little bit that they put so much effort in baseball and nothing else. Sure. But I mean, like I said I was I was on Chris Lee's podcast and I was just kind of talking to him because we've had this conversation and if anybody can answer it, Chris could. I said, What do they do with the money? They get forty five million dollars from the SEC every year. Mm-hmm. The stadium looks like hell. Yeah. All this stuff. They have an endowment in the billions. I mean, Vanderbilt has all the more all the money in the world. What do they do? Well, and they were handed a gift horse. In the uh, in the stadium thing, and they just with they, the soccer team, they refused it. Yeah, the Nashville Nashville SC is building a a new soccer stadium. I think they proposed to Vanderbilt, hey, let's go in and do this as a partnership. Mm-hmm. Forty thousand seat stadium, perfect for soccer, perfect for Vanderbilt. We could make it kind of cool. And Vanderbilt's like, nah, we're good. What was Chris's answer for? Where does the money go? He didn't have. He said they literally they pocket it and keep it and spend, don't spend it. Yeah. I mean, with the, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but a little bit of a guise of hey, somebody's doing something with it. I mean, it almost felt like there was some corruption somewhere yeah. inside it. Because when you don't try and you don't spend the money, what does that? You know, what yeah. Does, what does that mean? For sure. And I don't. I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, let's see. Georgia and Florida, the cocktail party in Jacksonville at two thirty this weekend. That line opened at thirteen. It's now at fourteen and a half between the Gators and the Bulldogs. So Georgia giving just more than two touchdowns to uh, to Florida. I just can't see a scenario where Florida competes in that game. Honestly. That line feels small to me. Yeah, I feel like there's a little bit of Florida credit there in that line that maybe is not actually true. Clemson is a 10-point home favorite against Florida State this weekend. That requires them to score. Florida State's actually had a pulse for a minute occasionally. Um, they're not good. No, but, they're not good at all. Um, that game, boring as hell. Uh, Oregon's still trying to make their march. They are 24-and-a-half-point favorites at home against Colorado this weekend in the uh, in the Pac-12. Oregon's a good team. Good team. Not great. Good. I like the over in the Texas Tech-Oklahoma game this weekend. Oklahoma minus 17 and a half against the Red Raiders and Norman Yeah, this uh, this weekend. So is Rattler still with the team, or is uh, he gone? I thought he was with the team. If he's not, I have not heard that, okay. at least. Somebody in the thread probably has seen more or knows more about that than I do. So a lot of know. buzz about him in the portal. It'd make a lot of sense. Yeah, he can't. he can't go pro now. No, I mean, I mean well, his, I mean, you can, his, but you're not. I mean, you're, his stock has been devastating. Yeah, you're dwindling to a huge point. Uh, Wake Forest. Speaking of Duke, sixteen and a half point favorites for the Demon Deacons over the Blue Devils. That is in uh, in, in Wake in Winston Salem. Uh, Ole Miss and Auburn. Auburn now minus two. Look, actually, from a Vegas standpoint, it opened at minus two. It is now still at minus two. Went to one and now back to two. Uh, line history. Let's see what it did. Got that right here. I saw it on DraftKings last night at one. Yes, Bavada. Actually, that's true. Bavada opened it at one, and it has moved to one and a half, and now moved to two from Bavada. Okay. Um. Yeah, anywhere from one and a half to two to one still at this moment, depending on what book you would like to use. But mostly sitting around two. 
at this point, just because I'm curious from a matchup standpoint. Odd Shark has uh, the Rebels winning 39 to 30 um, in uh, in this one. It says Ole Miss will win, cover the spread, and the total will go over. The total right now is 66 in this game. So uh, there's that. 66. Mm-hmm. I kind of like the under Do in you? that. Yeah, a little bit. Money line, not much of anything either way. I mean, there's not much. There's no value in a one, one and a half, two point money line. No. Here's a crazy stat for you. I thought this was really interesting from. And I get it's over a period, and I get you get swings in both directions, but just an average. I, I found this fairly fascinating. I'm going to write about it um, later in the year. Where Where is the total? Let me get this exactly right. Because I, I did. I, I found this interesting. Um, so, over the last 10 games, uh, Auburn is 8-2 and two against Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. Ole Miss only 2-8 and eight against the Rebels. Right. Total yards for the two teams okay. in these 10 games. Auburn, 449.9. Ole Miss, 449.6. Really? They have the exact same yards per game over the last 10 years, and Auburn is 8-2 and two in the games. I know I've covered all these games, so I should be able to discuss them. I can't. I don't, my, my brain doesn't work like that, but it feels like most of the games have been fairly close. So Ole, Miss, some sense. Ha- Ole Miss has a half turnover more per game. Yeah. So that's going to play into a score. Sure, of that course. could easily be the difference. And then you're also getting that basically Auburn has run the ball so well that Ole Miss has some mop up passing yards and different things that have that have eked out some total yards because you look at it, Auburn's dominated on the ground two thirty to one sixty over the last ten games. But then through the air, Ole Miss two eighty eight per game, Auburn two nineteen per game. So Auburn has controlled tempo, even though total yards have been been equal over the last ten. Some people are asking about Odd Shark, what they had on Ole Miss LSU. They had they had the game, they had the spread about right. They had the they score. They had Ole Miss winning. They had the score way too high. They did. Yeah, that is that 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 is correct. They had Ole Miss winning by twelve, I think. I can't remember. Was it was it twelve? Yeah, something like <laughs> something that. Something like that. They but they had the game much higher scoring than it ended up being. Yeah, like up in the forties. For some reason, I think they had Ole Miss in the uh, like at fifty one. Oh, really? I could be wrong. I mean, God, we see so many numbers over the course of a week that the my feeble brain can't compute them all. <laughs> uh, and then the game that is really, really interesting. So Kentucky at Mississippi State. Kentucky trying to get to eleven and one, which would get them into an access bowl um, at the end of the season. Yeah. Um, this line has not moved a ton. It's been sitting around. Yeah, you know, sitting around one most of uh, most of the the time. It opened briefly at Kentucky plus two, but it has moved to Kentucky minus one for the most part. I've been bullish on the Wildcats the whole year, with the exception of the Georgia game where they had no chance against Georgia. I actually played them okay if you think about it. Um, I think Kentucky wins this game and solidifies itself and rolls the back half of its schedule because if you're looking for Kentucky to lose one this might be it mm-hmm. I mean the schedule's cake because Kentucky after this Tennessee at home be a challenge but they should win they go to Vanderbilt W New Mexico State at home W at Louisville W Your bowl people. What makes this such a complicated game for Kentucky? State's okay. They're okay. They're okay. They're 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 okay on defense. Yeah. State has dominated Kentucky a lot in this series. They can do the you know they do the little air dump off, which is the new thing. No one sees it very much. Kentucky's a physical team. Kentucky's pretty good in the front seven. They're good. Yeah. It'll be interesting. It's an interesting game. What time is this game? I think it's the same time as Auburn game. Yeah, six. Um, SMU getting one of its challenges remaining. They are a three point. Well, they open as a three point underdog to Houston. They are now a one point underdog at Houston this weekend. Yeah, this will be a good game. Yeah, SMU Houston, Houston is Houston's playing really well. And then Ole Miss saw Louisville to open the year. Louisville is on the road and they're a seven point underdog to Dave Doran and NC State this weekend. So the Cardinals plus Dave, seven. Dave having a nice year. Dave's having a nice year. What does Odd Shark do with the Kentucky Mississippi State game? Mm.
28-24 Kentucky. That's about right. Is what they have. That feels about right. And they have it going over because the over-under for college, this is so low. Yeah. It's an NFL, 47 on the over-under on Kentucky and State. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. On a Mike Leach team that you'd be that, that down. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. Uh, North Carolina, Notre Dame. Notre Dame minus three and a half against the Tar Heels in, uh, in South Bend this weekend. Opened at six, down to three and a half, though. There's some movement. Kind of like North Carolina there. Uh, yeah, there's a yeah. little bit of, meh. Uh, Penn State getting 17 and a half in Columbus, Ohio this weekend. The Nittany Lions and the Buckeyes. You're going to need more than that. You're going to strap up. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a day. Ohio State really playing well right they're, now. They're, they're a top three team today. For sure. Yeah. They might be number two, frankly, because Alabama keeps playing with its food a little bit. They do, and then Alabama turns it on in the fourth quarter and, and turns a – Because they covered. They covered. Yeah. Turns a close game <laughs> into a blowout. Yeah, yeah. Uh, UCLA Utah is kind of fun uh, late at night. We'll get that on Saturday yeah. night. Utah minus four and a half against the Bruins in Utah. Utah blew one against Oregon State. Did they? Yeah. Um, San Diego State minus one only against Fresno uh, in San Diego. So that, and then up. Uh, I've. I mean, I, I know I've said this all year. They're kind of like my weird team for the year. Yep. I like them. They're on the road. Good game. We get to watch this nine fifteen Virginia at BYU okay. on Saturday night. Not a bad game. It's it's a decent, completely fine game. So that's Bronco going to coach against his old team. It is. You have to think it's something to do with in the, the contract. Yeah, that's a contractual obligation to some extent there. So yeah, but I, I just that's that's interesting. So we'll get game times this week for Liberty. Liberty. Mm-hmm. Want to take our weekly stab? We've not gotten it right once. Right, that week, uh, it's Alabama at LSU. I mean, LSU at Alabama, I should say. Has CBS already grabbed that or no? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Uh, Mississippi State's at Arkansas. Auburn is at Texas A&M. That's got the CBS game written all over it. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Florida at South Even Carolina. Even with an Auburn loss? Well, they got to do it today. You, you got you to gotta, you gotta flip a coin. Hmm. Um. Missouri at Georgia, that's yuck. Tennessee at Kentucky, you're gambling that Kentucky wins. Does anyone care about Hugh for coming back? No, not because not not with they would have if Liberty were winning and nationally. Ranked. Is Malik Willis healthy? No, he hurt his foot, went to the Is hospital. I don't I don't know, but if you're making that decision today, you have to assume that Malik Willis won't play. It's the only non-con game. It's the only non-con game. Probably stuck in that three o'clock SST network game. That'd be my guess. If it if you told me it's something different, it's an eleven a.m. SEC network game. I just can't see this thing going tonight. I really need Mississippi State Arkansas to be the eleven a.m. game. Okay. Yeah. That would be beneficial. Yeah. For my personal life. Yeah. Tennessee Arky feels night game. Tennessee, Kentucky. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. It does. Now, if – look, if if you – who's Tennessee got this weekend? I know we just talked about it. They're off. Yeah, they are. I don't know that Tennessee at Kentucky's got enough national appeal, even if Kentucky beats State. Yeah, yeah. Alabama LSU has no national appeal, and it's a blowout. If I were ESPN, I'd put that game at 11 o'clock on ESPN. Alabama? Yeah. I would, too. They'll watch Alabama for a minute. Like yeah, whatever, sure. And then, but then who do you put? I guess you put the Auburn-Texas A&M game at 2.30. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I, I don't have any real issue with that. Uh, podcast brought to you in part by Nixtan & Associates. That's nixtanoxford.com, 662-281-1200. Let them help you with all your real estate needs here in the Oxford area. On the buy side or the sell side, Clay DeWeese, O'Keefe Graham, and their team of associates can assist you with anything in Oxford and Lafayette County related to real estate. Clay, also your Mississippi House Representatives District 12 member as well. So uh, give them a call, 662-281-1200. They sponsor my 321 football content item every week on rebelgrove.com. You can click the link in that article. You can click the link on the message board. 
and head over to nickstanoxford.com. Again, 662-281-1200. Yeah, I'll pay a bill or two here in a minute, but Doors Rules is right. He says, if I'm Malik Willis in a terrible quarterback draft year, no way I play Ole Miss injured and mess up my draft status. I'll go further. If I'm Malik Willis, the next pass I throw is is at a pro day or a combine. You're done. When I say next pass, I throw in front of people. Right. I'm getting myself healthy. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not taking one for that team. Sorry. We're also brought to you by uh, Lamons Fine Jewelry. Lamons at 1126 North Lamar Boulevard in Oxford. They've been serving the Oxford area for more than 73 years, from engagement rings to wedding rings to fine jewelry, watches, pearls, fashion jewelry, children's jewelry, collectibles, and more. It's the gold standard in fine jewelry. LamonsFineJewelry.com or 662-234-2777. Also brought to you by Comer Heating and Air, Southern Air Conditioning and Heating. Different names, same great products and services. If you live in Oxford, Tupelo, or the surrounding area, call Comer at 662-801-1777. If you live in Hernando, Memphis, or the surrounding area, call 662-429-4429. College Corner is your one-stop Rebel Shop. Two locations in the Jackson area. In Ridgeland, it's next to Fleet Feet. In Flowood, it's next to Half Shell. If you don't live in Jackson, just go to collegecornerstore.com. Plus, you can find them on Facebook and Instagram. It's uh, Whether you're tailgating in Oxford or home gating with friends and family, the College Corner has you covered for game day. They have the largest selection of Rebel gear in central Mississippi. We're also brought to you by Pinnacle. It's mypinwealth.com. M-Y-P-I-N-N wealth.com. They provide detailed, specialized investment management, financial planning, retirement planning for individuals and businesses, and so much more. John Edwards of Regency Travel Incorporated is the place to go if you're thinking about travel. You got a holiday trip coming up. Maybe you're uh, already planning a big summer vacation. You want to see what uh, deals are still out there. I would get in touch with uh, John. Just give him some parameters. Give him a budget. And he will come up with options that you're not going to think of on your own. And uh, you don't have to live in or near Memphis to take advantage of his services. 901-494-3387 or send him an email at jedwards at regencytravel.net. I'll have a mailbag up on uh, Wednesday. It'll be brought to you by Whitney McNutt of Tommy Morgan Incorporated Realtors. Serving you for all your real estate needs in Oxford and Tupelo. Uh, she sells condo, land, commercial, and residential family homes, 662-567-2573 or 662-842-3844. Podcast is brought to you by G&M Pharmacy and Tyson Drugs. Let G&M take care of all your local pharmacy needs at 662-236-2222. They deliver locally in the Oxford area and they offer MedSync to fill your prescriptions the same day each month. And take care of you with just one trip to the pharmacy, one delivery, and you have everything you need. Also, with Right Way Meds, they individually package your medication to, uh, <clears throat> sorry, to uh, to handle individually packaging to take care of you. Even if you uh, need that kind of thing, you can save a life in certain circumstances. So, uh, Right Way Meds and more there with GNM 662-236-2222. Podcast also brought to you by Johnston Hill Creamery. Johnston Hill Creamery. Dot com Just 24 hours notice for, to get things delivered right to you in the Grove. I know a lot of people got used them last week to get their tailgate set up prior to LSU. It's artisanal cheese trays, charcuterie boards, dessert sandwiches, salads, and plenty other things there with Johnston Hill Creamery. I like the uh, the spice of feta dip, the pepper jelly, the spiced honey, and more. So johnstonhillcreamery.com. It's right there off Molly Bar here in Oxford, 662-419-9201. Uh, Saints and Seahawks tonight from Monday Night Football. You get the returning of the Manning cast tonight as uh, as well. So yeah. that is, uh, that's going on. You know, it's the first time I've had to actually pick my broadcast for a game I'm really locked into. You know, it's one thing to watch the Manning cast when you don't necessarily care what's going on with the game and you're just sort of in and out and whatever. So, And I'm still going to watch it tonight, but it is a little bit of a different viewing experience when you're a little more locked into the actual action as it's as it's going on. So... I'll be curious to see if at any point I want to open up a second screen, if I want to do something different, how I how I handle the the deal. What um, NFL did you watch yesterday? Uh, as far as actually watched, very little. I kept up with a good bit because um, I've – there for a minute the lines were kind of scaring the Rams, so yeah. I, I locked in on that in the 3 o'clock window a little bit. Um, Jared Goff sort of opened up about – kind of felt like they did him wrong. I watched Bengals – uh, Ravens, 
Jamar Chase is a bad man. Yeah, did you see what he's on pace for? His his pace is I forget the touchdowns. It's something nuts and like eighteen hundred yards receiving or something is the pace he's currently on. He's a bad man. I'm gonna tell you. Listen now, the Bengals. Let me you're, take this real quick. Yeah, you're fine. Neil was saying the Bengals have a uh, a good bit in uh, in place there to um to, to make a run. Uh, looking around the NFL from last night while he is uh, while he's gone. I mean, the, the the game of the day is just the way the Titans ran over the Kansas City Chiefs yesterday. Titans twenty seven, Chiefs three. I mean, Tanny Hill goes twenty one of twenty seven for two seventy. Derrick Henry didn't do a ton, but he did run the ball twenty nine times. And then AJ Brown, huge day, eight catches, one hundred thirty three yards, and a score. Patrick Mahomes going off what appeared to be concussion protocol there at one point of um. Of that, so a lot of uh, a lot of interesting stuff about the Chiefs. I mean, they have not played overly well. They're three and four overall now. The Titans moved to five and two, and uh, I I'm not ready to completely throw the book at Kansas City by any means. But something there does not feel like it has the last couple of years. They're 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 discombobulated into a way that I don't have them among the top teams in the AOC for dang sure. The NFL's just not created for, for the dynasties. dynasties, unless you're the New England Patriots. What, what, it makes you appreciate the greatness of the. It also dynasty. makes you want to stab everybody else in that division for sucking. Well, that helped because the NFL was made for them team for at least one of those teams to be better, and yes. they just never took that step. Buffalo got close, but it took them a long time. Yeah, Miami was horrible. Um, the Jets, the are, Jets are the Jets are one of the worst franchises in professional sports. So there were a lot of factors there to why that happened. I guess is the. Uh, is oh, my, the call was nothing about football. It's okay. nothing, nothing work related. It was my mother. I had to take the call. Yeah. Okay. Um, but that's the interesting thing. Um, the Dolphins continue to really suck. They fall to one and six after losing to Atlanta, thirty to twenty eight yesterday. Mac Jones had it's against the Jets, so take that for what it's worth. But Mac Jones had a hell of a day. Pats win fifty four thirteen. Jones goes twenty four of thirty six for three oh seven and two. Um, yesterday for the Patriots. Look, they they that's who they targeted, and you know, I mean. I think you have to give their franchise – it wasn't just Tom Brady that let them do what they did for as long as they did it. Um, Sam Darnold looked like warmed over hell for the Panthers yesterday against the uh, the Giants. He did. The Giants just routing the Panthers 25-3 to in, at, in New York. Giants showed yesterday. some signs of life in that game. Yeah, they're 2-5. and five. They're two wins over the Saints and the Panthers. And then um, Justin Fields had a NFL rookie game that you've just got to do. Yeah, you've just got to have them. They 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 they're inevitable. Seems like, and he had his. They had no chance. Thirty eight three Tampa over Chicago, and Tampa stopped. Otherwise, it was whatever they wanted it to be. Yeah, Brady throws for only two eleven, but throws for four touchdowns yesterday. Uh, the, Someone asked, "Is Burrow in the MVP mix? If he plays like this for ten more weeks, yeah." Um. Yeah, they just got to win games. I just don't know if they can win enough. We'll see. Um, he put together he he put everything to bed. They're all five and two. He put together everything though, as far as we questioned or we didn't, but media questioning what he was going to look like in the preseason, and he definitely does not appear to be hurt right now. He 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 he's found a stride. Forty one seventeen over the Ravens yesterday. The uh, first ever thirty-one to five final score in NFL history yesterday Saw that. between the uh, Cardinals and the Texans. The Texas Texans are god awful. They fall to one and six. The Cardinals are damn good. They're seven and zero. Oh. They they go to three and zero oh at home. They obviously are in that NFC West where somebody, at least one team, is going to really hate being a wild card because they're maybe the two best teams in the NFC or in that division between the Cardinals and the uh, the Rams. And then your night game last night, thirty to eighteen, the Colts knocking off the San Francisco 49ers. 49ers falling to two and four, which eliminates them in that division. Yeah, they're done. That's it. What are the Colts now? Three and four. Let's go say they're kind of five hundred. Three and four. It's 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 you know through seven weeks at this point. Um, Bills have a two game lead in the AFC East over the Patriots. They're the only winning team in that division. They're four and two. Pats three and four. The other two two teams. The other two teams in the division win one one game. The Ravens and the Bengals are five and two. They have a one game lead on the Cleveland Browns in the uh, the NFC North. So good good situation going there. Yeah, in the North. for sure. Uh, Titans have a two game lead in the AFC South. So Indianapolis actually is in second place in the South right now behind the Titans because the Jags and the Texans are in that division. 
And then the Las Vegas Raiders, 5-2, and two, um, half game ahead of the Los Angeles Chargers right now. So the Chiefs in third place, tied with the Denver Broncos. Dallas Cowboys are 5-1 and one and already have a four-game lead in the loss column in the, in the NFC East. 2-5 and five is in second place. So that division's almost over with the Cowboys there. Pat's 6-1. and one. They have walked off from the NFC North. The Vikings are in second place at 3-3. Three and three. The Bucks at 6-1. and one. They are um, ahead of the 3-2 and two New Orleans Saints at this point. We'll see what the Saints do tonight. Trying to keep a game and a half behind there, the Bucks. And then, yeah, in the uh, NFC West, Cardinals 7-0, and oh, Rams 6-1 and one, with the Seahawks 2-4 and four, and the 49ers at 2-4. and four. Little rundown in the uh, in the NFL. There, we'll probably do a little more of that tomorrow, following the Saints game to uh, tonight as uh, as well. Yes, yeah, true, Luke Gruden. Him being gone, Raiders two and zero after uh, after that. NFL teams hate distractions. Kind of universal. Mm-hmm. And he was a distraction, whether it was fair or not. And frankly, I think it was. You just can't be in that position and have emails like that. Over and over and over. Yeah, and you just can't. Not stop. What's the fascinating part of that deal was that he's the only person. Well, that's some awesome. other people got yeah. protected. Yeah, for that, sure. That, that's impossible to believe at that point. So, I just stumbled across this because it's the team I have on my ESPN page. When you like click your favorites or whatever, and I mean, when fan is way too strong or whatever. And I guess the NHL season just started, but you read a lot of Chicago media. The Blackhawks are 0-5 on the season. Oh. Yeah. Just Again, just stumbled there. They lose at home last night to the Red Wings 6-3. to Ooh. They fall to 0-5 on the year. Bulls are off to an okay start. Are they? Yeah. Okay. Whatever. I've had a – it's been harder to watch NBA so far this year than it's been for me in a long time. I don't know why. Just Could just be because I'm so busy with other stuff, and it's mm-hmm. just I don't have time to sit down on a game. Yeah. Um. We're also brought to you by Service Specialist. They've got offices in Ridgeland, Canton, Jackson, and Oxford. They've been connecting candidates and employers since 1967 as the oldest staffing company in Mississippi. Whether you're a new college grad or a seasoned professional, whether you're in engineering, dentistry, accounting, law, manufacturing, human resources, or more, get in contact with service specialists. If you're a recent grad without much experience, you should reach out because they're always looking for candidates that have potential and want to learn and get their foot in the door with uh, growth opportunities. Mississippi's a small state. Service specialists always know about jobs that never get advertised. Prospective employers should contact them too because they're all they always have Resumes and names ready for your perusal from people who uh, are looking for a new job, maybe looking to relocate to Mississippi, but want to keep that confidential. 662-832-5138 or servicespecialistltd.com. Uh, Alpha Specialties is the uh, premium trailer dealership in Mississippi. It's at 1670 Highway 80 in Pearl, Mississippi. They're your trailer-specific professional. If you want to haul it, they can call it at Alpha They've got Hallmark cargo trailers. They've got load trail. They can work with third parties to have game day trailers and concession trailers built as well. 601-932-9798 or alphaofms.com. Uh, we're also brought to you by The Rogue. I'll be visiting with Chance Campbell later today. That will be uh, up on the site at some point late afternoon in all likelihood. That's brought to you by The Rogue. It's your destination for fine men's clothing. Their stylist hand select. Uh, prices from top designers, from work to lifestyle to nightlife. There's always something, uh, the perfect something for you at The Rogue. Peter Millar, Martin Dingman, Jack Victor, Halsey, True Grit, and more at The Rogue. It's therogue.com. Uh, Basketball is right around the corner. The Oxford Park Commission has opened registration for the 2022 youth season. Leagues are open for uh, ages 7 to 15. The cost to play is $50 per participant. Uh, the season begins January 3rd, goes through February the 24th. Games are played on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays with no more than two games in a week for teams. So go to OxfordParkCommission.com to sign up your son or daughter. And we're brought to you by Joey Erickson at Heron Gear Autoplex. Let him help you find the vehicle you're looking for at a price you can afford. Choose from a full selection of new Chevrolet, BMW, Lexus, and Infinity, or get a great deal on numerous brands of reliable pre-owned vehicles. Give uh, Joey a call or text on his cell at 662 662- 
571-2367. Tell him what you're looking for. Stop by 1685 High Street in Jackson to test drive that new or used vehicle you've been wanting. Let him earn your business. Yeah, Carson's, Carson likes the Grizz. He loves Morant. He loves Steven Adams. He's with the Grizzlies now, so he's that. But he can't go to the games because he's not vaxxed at 15. Seems silly. Um, Just looking at St. Seahawks here, I'll see him with some of the betting experts had on the best uh, lines. If you need to get a little pick-me-up prior to uh, the end of the week, if yesterday didn't go overly well for you, if Saturday didn't go over well, they've got uh, ESPN's experts have Winston over 205 passing yards as a, uh, as a bet today. Kamara over 29.5 receiving yards on this one. Um, Kamara under 93.5 rushing yards as a pick here. And then a first half under of 21. So uh, those are the picks they have tonight for uh, Saints and Seahawks. Okay. They also like the Saints to cover the spread. So, bit, bit Saints ex- four-point road favorite tonight. Seattle can't stumble much. No, two and four. It's, yeah, it's, it's, that's it's it, now. Almost. Now's yeah, the time. I'm not sure those other teams are losing four games. No. Cardinals don't look like a four-loss team. Rams don't look like a four-loss team. That's, so you're playing for that that's last, night night at that point. Last yeah, wild card at this point. And the problem is you've got to play those teams. Yeah. Yeah. So unless you're beating them, there, there's a little bit of an issue there. Uh Ten Thoughts, a lot of recruiting, uh, snap counts up. Ole Miss, you can go read it at rebelgrip.com, but Ole Miss did a much better job from a snap count standpoint. Now LSU was not in a hurry, but no defensive player played more than fifty seven snaps on, oh, that was um, good. on Saturday. Deontay Deontay Prince and Otis Reese both played fifty seven. Chance Campbell, 54. And from a crazy efficiency stat, Mark Robinson had 12 tackles in 33 snaps on uh, on Saturday. So, Robinson all over the field when he was in the game. Uh, DeMond Clowney did get some SEC action. He played six snaps for the Rebels on uh, on Saturday. He came in late and played some. Yeah. Uh, three players played every snap for the Rebels on offense. Broker, James, and Mana uh, there. So, Corral came out for the one snap when Kincaid Dent was in. Yeah. So, that was uh, that. So, uh, okay, that is uh, it. Thanks to Romero Miller for his time today. We will uh, be back tomorrow with another edition of the podcast. So, I hope all you guys have a wonderful day. Lane Kiffin here at noon. We'll have coverage at Take care, and we'll talk to you soon.